our evolution of the start experience. So I'm going to begin here by taking this relatively generic start experience. I've signed into my Facebook account. I've signed into my Exchange account. But I want to customize it so that it suits me, bringing the people and things that I care about right to the front center so they're faster and easier to get to. So the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, go into the People Hub. And I'm going to find my wife. The top priority for me uh, in my smartphone experience is having fast access to my wife, seeing what she's up to as she posts photos, as she sends me texts, all kinds of messaging. And then what I'm going to do is take both myself there at left and my wife, uh, press and hold here. I'm going to turn these into our new small size live tiles. That's new in Windows Phone 8. Uh, and then I'm going to take each of these and scooch them up a little closer to the top of the screen. I'll put myself right there. I'll grab my wife and put her up here. And there you go. So now I've got uh, my own me tile handy. So if I want to post quickly to Facebook or Twitter, that's just a, a quick thumb press away. And now my wife is available and handy. Uh, that games tile right up there, I, I love playing games on my phone. Uh, there's a lot of games that I'm spending much time with. But I'm going to scooch it down here because what I want to do on my start screen is really focus on people up at the top. So instead of the games tile, I'm going to grab my photos tile here, which today is a large tile on Windows Phone 7, but now on Windows Phone 8, I can shrink it down to a medium size. I'm going to scooch it up there, so I'm building this space at the top that I'm going to dedicate to the people that I want to stay in touch with. And now I need to fill in that black gap there, so let's go grab a couple more people. I'm going to the People Hub. Uh, touch the letter A here to get my, my uh, picker by letter. Then I'm going to grab Terry Meyerson, my boss, and him to start. And we'll go back here and grab Steve Ballmer as well, who we certainly want, wouldn't want to leave out of my personalized start experience. As you can see here, obviously Terry must be wondering what's going on with me. I've got missed calls from Steve. I've got new messages from Terry. Uh, already the benefit of these live tiles but let's scooch them up. And one thing that you might notice here is that these small people tiles, um, I see the photos that people are posting, but I also see the number of notifications. And you all are familiar with Windows Phone. We aggregate together things like your text messages, Facebook messages, Facebook posts, so that you have one quick place to glance at and connect with all the things that the people you care about are doing. Um, so now, the top of my start experience here really is dedicated to those humans in my life that I want to be in touch with, and I feel pretty good about that. So the next thing I'm going to do is focus on apps. Uh, as Stephen mentioned earlier, the Windows Phone app catalog has been growing really quickly. We're well over 100,000 apps. And as many of you probably are aware, a lot of the announcements that we made in June relate to our core technology the Windows Phone 8 technology shares a common core code base with Windows 8. And one of the, the benefits of that technology change is that our app platform becomes much easier as an ecosystem for de developers to target a really wide range of devices. So let me, uh, let me just take some apps. The first thing I'm actually going to do is grab a couple apps here that already exist in Windows Phone 7. Because Windows Phone 8, of course, runs the Windows Phone 7 apps as well. So I'll grab Flip, Flickster there. I'm going to grab the Weather Channel here and pin these to start. And you'll notice that right here on Windows <laughs> Phone 8, even though I'm running on a brand new high-resolution screen, these live tiles scale up. They look terrific. These apps were unchanged, and they still work on Windows Phone 8. So all that benefit is still available to users. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'll grab these and scooch them up. Um, we'll get them up here so they're a little bit better in view. And then the last thing I'm going to do with apps is jump back over here and grab uh, a CNN tile. One of the things that's cool about this, CNN has built an app, and what they're going to do as well for Windows Phone 8 is support some of the brand new platform extensions that are available as part of Windows Phone 8. So here I can take this CNN tile, for example, and turn it into the new extra large size, which is incredibly handy for me, as a guy who really wants to follow the news and see what the top headlines are, glanceably, anytime I'm using my phone, jump to the start experience. So now you can see I've got at the top of my phone the people that I care about most. 
Right below, I've got some live tiles from the apps and third-party experiences that I care about most. And that's an example of how the platform, these live tiles, of course, work not just on my Windows Phone 8 device, but on my Windows PC as well. The last thing that I want to do in terms of customizing my Star experience and recapping some of what we talked about in June is bring the web into this story as well. So I'm going to go to uh, IE and uh, we are coming up on a blank page right here. But I want to do a, a quick thing because we've mentioned that we intend for Windows Phone 8 to be really personal. And there's another nice little feature that we've done here to make IE itself also <coughs> really personal. So you see that the button right up there next to the edit control that you can press to refresh? While that is nice, it's not what I personally would rather see every day when I use IE. So I'm going to go into settings here, and I have a few choices here. I can change that to a favorites button or change it to a tabs button. I'll choose tabs and go back. And now I've got a tabs button right there, super handy. I can touch that with one press, and now I can see all the open tabs that I have in IE 10. So I'm going to choose pulse here. I'm sure you all are familiar with pulse. Pulse is a news aggregator. And what's interesting about this example is this is Pulse's new HTML5 website. And of course, in i10, it works with touch. Uh, this is full hardware accelerated HTML5. And the interesting thing here is that the, the markup for this website is exactly the same between the phone and my Windows 8 Slate or laptop or desktop. The, the web authoring that's happened here using HTML5 standard support does rescaling of the layout of the page depending on the screen size. So I get a very consistent experience across this wide range of devices, enabling the site authors to target a huge number of people with a great, compelling experience. So rather than looking at food news, uh, I'm going to use the Pulse uh, HTML navigation here to choose the business news section. And you can see here, it's a nice looking layout, fits here. What I'm going to do is actually pin that to my start experience as well. So I'll, I'll pull up the app bar menu, choose pin to start, and now I've got an uh, excellent HTML5 website right there as part of my customized start experience. So I feel pretty good now. I've got the people that I care about most, the apps, both some old apps and some new apps, and a website all uh, building up this new, highly personalized experience for me. And what I want to do is something that's new, which we haven't announced yet. I want to share that with a bunch of my friends. So I'm going to use one of the new features in Windows Phone 8, uh, and I'm going to press the power and home button here. Just press there. You heard that sound. You saw that flash. And up on top it says, saving to screenshots. So Windows Phone 8 now supports screenshots. I know some of you bloggers out there have been waiting, wondering when this feature will be available. Well, here it is. Uh, and just to show you how the, the task completes, I'll go into my Photos Hub, where I'm going to spend some time, because I want to really get into some of the new photography things that we've done in Windows Phone 8. I'll go into my Albums view, and you'll see there's my camera roll, my saved pictures. I've got all my SkyDrive and Facebook albums in here. So they're super easy to get to. And here is my screenshot list. Um, I've got a bunch of screenshots. Here's the one I just took. And now for me, uh, sort of a historic moment, I'll go into share. Lots of ways I can share. I can chat, share via tap and send with NFC. I can share via Facebook, OneNote. What I'm going to do is take this and post to Twitter. First ever WP8 public screenshot. <coughs> there we go. And we'll post that to Twitter. Twitter is confirming that it should share, it should store, use the photo that's stored on SkyDrive. So I'm going to say OK. That photo is now published to SkyDrive. I've now tweeted out to all my followers on Twitter my own personalized start experience. And one of the things that we tried to capture here was a number of these customized start experiences to give you a sense for how widely Windows Phone can cover the interests and desires of people who are obviously all very different. So there's my customized start screen. Here's another example we made that's a lot more sort of simple, direct, reminiscent of the Windows Phone 7 visual look and feel with a focus on the medium-sized tiles. Um, here's a, another example focused on someone who's really into sports. You can see uh, they, this person's got the Seattle Sounders right up front, lots of small tiles. 
Here's an example focused a little bit more on media and entertainment. And I'll just pan through these so you can see how color, tile size, layout, all flexibly let people create an experience that is the most unique for them and makes the smartphone fast and easy to use. So that's our screenshot feature and the personalization that's possible with uh, Windows Phone 8's new start experience. Now I'm going to spend the rest of my time focused on photography. And there are a number of new things that we've done. And I'm going to jump in by engaging the camera experience. So I've got my Lumia 920 here. I pull it out of my pocket. I'm going to press and hold the camera button, as you're all familiar with. And the Windows Phone camera is displayed. There we go. That's our basic camera. And one of the, for those of you who are familiar with Windows Phone, you might notice at the right our zoom bar is gone. That's because we now support pinch zoom in the camera. So that's a nice, intuitive, quick and easy thing for people to do. And that's given us some space over here to do things like have a super fast and easy control for the flash. But what I really want to spend time on is this button at the bottom. That's called the lenses button. Imagine I pressed my camera button, and now I want to engage some other software to do lots of innovative things at the moment I take a photo. Now let me explain this concept of lenses. Uh, what you see here is a number of tiles on the screen, each of which is an application. We call these lens applications, and they integrate deeply into the built-in camera experience at the moment you take a photo, or later on at the time that you're viewing a photo. Um, at upper left, the Bing Vision lens is built into Windows Phone. So you can pull your camera up to your phone out of your pocket, press the shutter button, and immediately recognize an object like a book or a DVD. These other examples are third-party lenses, some of which we, Microsoft, have written as samples. Obviously, the CNN iReport lens will be part of the CNN app that will ship later this year. So there's a social network activity that's available at the moment you take a photo. Now, let me give you an example of how this actually works. I'm going to choose the, the bottom, uh, on the bottom there, the lens called FX Suite. And when I choose the lens, what you'll see is the application runs and takes over the viewfinder of the camera. Now, what's interesting about this FX Suite lens is this was actually written by two summer interns at Microsoft in about a two week period. So they could get up to speed really quickly with the platform and build something that's kind of cool. So you can see here, it's taken the viewfinder and it's showing me four different effects that I might use on the picture I'm going to take. Uh, I'm going to choose the funky looking negative example down here. And you'll see my viewfinder now moves into that negative view. When I press the, the camera shutter button, the photo, excuse me, when I press the camera shutter button, the photo was taken, and now I'm back at my viewfinder, able to choose another effect. Or I can go back to the default camera, and what I'm going to do here is pan back in time through the camera roll that's built in as part of the Windows Phone camera experience. So I've just taken my picture, and you'll notice here, the picture I just took has a caption underneath it that says, it was captured by FX Suite, because I engaged that lens application to actually take the photo. And if I keep panning back in time, you'll see some other photos I've taken. Here is a photo of a sunflower that I also captured with FX Suite in the black and white mode. Here's a, a normal photo that didn't use a lens. And as I go back, you can see other lenses were engaged on images. So this one's kind of a good example. This, this photo is a photo of the Notre Dame Cathedral that was captured by Photosynth. That's what it says down there at the bottom. At the time I took this picture, imagine I was traveling, I was visiting the cathedral, I used the camera button to engage the Microsoft Photosynth lens. For those of you not familiar, Photosynth is like a super panorama app that lets you pan 360 degrees around and capture a lot of detail and compose a Photosynth. And looking at a Photosynth, you know, it's useful to look at it as a photo, what's really useful is to engage the Photosynth viewer. So now as I'm panning back through my camera lens, I can look at this photo, know that it was captured with Photosynth, choose Open in Photosynth, and the Photosynth viewer is engaged, giving me a full, rich experience on how to consume this photo. So now, when I pan around, I get a 360 degree view. When I pan back, I can zoom in and look at more detail in the image and so on. And what you're actually seeing here is a third-party application. And that application might have been pre-installed on the phone at the time you bought it, or you might have downloaded and installed it from the marketplace. The, the net benefit is that the experience of taking photos, from the moment you take it out of your pocket and push that button, to the time that you view the photos later on, you get a, an experience that lets third parties 
add value for creativity, for social networking, for image quality. And the other thing that's cool about this, um, imagine uh, I've been taking these pictures over time. You saw me just take that picture of the stage here. One of the, the additional things that we've done in this camera photography experience is to take all these images and enable full resolution automatic upload of photos and video to the SkyDrive service. SkyDrive is our cloud service that spans from phones to PCs to slates. And if I navigate here on my Windows 8 PC, I can go into the built-in photos experience, uh, open the SkyDrive container, and you'll see here my SkyDrive camera roll. When I zoom out, you'll, you'll notice there's exactly the same photos that I've been showing you on my phone. That's the one I just took now, automatically uploaded to the cloud, so it's available on all my devices automatically. There's my photo synth. These are my uh, FX Suite photos. So what we've tried to do is build lenses in a way that enables the whole experience for the end user to work seamlessly inside the camera experience on the phone, but also translate fully through the cloud service to all the other devices that you might be looking at photos with. Now, I have one last lens example I'm going to show uh, before I wrap up. And the ones I've showed you so far have been pretty simple examples that generate one image. And one of the cool things about a smartphone and all the, the app platform goodness and computational power of the device is that capturing multiple images and then storing them can enable some fantastic image quality in great end user scenarios. So I have another example lens here. Uh, this one's called Blink. It was written by Microsoft Research to try to use facial recognition and get the best picture of a face. So this is a basic sample app. I'm going to aim it at myself here. And now watch as I press the shutter button. It's going to take a lot of frames. I'll move my head and talk, and we'll see how it does. The, the rich computation looks at that whole series of images that all got picked, that all got taken. It chooses the one that it thinks is the best. And as an end user, I can say, yeah, that looks great to me. I'll press the Save button. And now that image has been saved as my camera roll. I can navigate back in time, just as you saw me do with other lenses. There it is. There's the one that was captured by Blink. And if I want to, you'll notice that's just one image in my camera roll. There's the previous picture I took. But what Blink is doing is actually storing all of the data associated with that picture. And in Blink's case, that was a lot of images. And what that means is, as a user, if I want, I can later on go back here, re-engage the Blink lens, and modify the resulting picture that it generated. Now, this capability means that third-party software developers can write unbelievable apps that, that create amazing creative, creative experiences and incredibly high-quality photos. And one of the great things about this is that Nokia has additionally been spending time with this platform. In just a few minutes, you'll see Kevin Shields demo some of the Lens apps that will be part of the Lumia 920, making it an amazing device for capturing pictures. So that's my quick look at Windows Phone 8. Um, in our opinion, unlike any other smartphone, Windows Phone 8 is going to enable these devices, and in particular the Lumia 920, to use the live tiles, the great photo experiences, to make the most personal phone experience bring the people and things that you care about most right to the front center of your screen.